Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. My name is Dr. Amay Patil. I'm currently working as an assistant professor at Rutgers School of Dental Medicine, Newark, New Jersey, United States. And being as an uh, alumni of our school, uh, MGV Dental College, uh, MGV's KBS Dental College and Hospital, I feel humbled and grateful uh, to be here with you all. Let's uh, start a journey to become a smile designer. And when we talk about smile designing, the first thing comes in all dentist mind is laminates, veneers. And do you do direct veneers or indirect veneers? So today I'm presenting this lecture on digital smile designing, dental laminates and veneers. So after graduation from our school, I started my journey with Dr. Sandesh Maikar, who is the father of modern dentistry. Then Dr. Galip Gurel, Dr. Riley Rosenthal, Dr. Michael Galili at NYU. Uh, I was fortunate to share the platform at the largest dental conference with Dr. Gordon Christensen, then started my journey with um, three ships. This is Dr. Uh, Jonathan Levine on the right hand side. I was performing uh, my own smile designing at three ship, as you can see here. Uh, then Dr. Christian Coachman, Dr. Carla Sodo, Dr. Coachman and Dr. with Ralph. And Ralph is the founder of SmileFi, another software and got a couple of friends in this journey who believes in biomimetic dentistry and smile designing like Dr. Uh, Mad Najad. Um, and I started teaching about digital smile designing, laminates, veneers. So uh, why laminates and veneers? Definitely it's an art and science of dentistry. And we say laminates and veneers because for everyone, laminates and veneers are the same but it is defined in contemporary of cosmetic dentistry by Dr. Maiker, who is my guru. So the dental veneers are custom made shells made from tooth colored materials that facilitate covering the front structure of the tooth. And these are alternatively known as dental laminates. But there is a difference. Many dentists get confused between dental laminates and veneers and they think these both are the same. But in cosmetic dentistry, both are different. For example, if you get a certificate, you can laminate the certificate in which the color of the certificate is not going to change. Whereas when you veneer the wood, you can change the color of the wood. So when we say A2 laminate, the color of the tooth is A2 and the end product of the laminate is also A2. But if we say veneer A2, so what is the previous shade of the original tooth? Maybe A4, B2, or C4. So now you have to convert from these A4, B2, and or C4 to A2. That means you need opaque and then create the actual shade and translucent effect. Therefore, laminates and veneers are depending on the restorations to be created. For example, laminates for misshaped teeth and veneers for discolored teeth. And all these dental laminates and veneers are normally classified under cosmetic dentistry. So there are two types of veneers. One is composite veneers, or we can say direct veneer. And the other one is porcelain veneer. The composite veneers can be built up in the mouth by directly placing it and can be fabricated in the dental lab, uh, whereas porcelain veneers cannot be built in mouth and hence fabricated outside and then fitted later. Let's have a look on the indications. For aesthetically compromised anterior teeth or poorly shaped teeth, we can change, we can, uh, change the shape for discolored or stained teeth. We can modify the shade of the tooth. And if the shade is only concerned, then we should consider whitening without altering the teeth. And we can alter the length of the tooth. We can close spaces like diastema. We can restore fractured teeth or tooth wear. We can use it for unesthetic uh, existing restorations on patient demands. Um, and if they don't want to get for, go for braces, then in certain cases, we can restore the alignment of the teeth as well. So uh, because remember, the even minimum preparation veneers or minimal prep veneers are irreversible. So what are contraindications of porcelain veneers? Lack of marginal enamel, lack of adequate internal enamel, teeth with inadequate enamel present. Many times a uh, patient has habitual clenching and grinding. There could be unresolved functional issues. 
in severe parental disease. Uh, sometimes teeth are weakened by existing large restorations. There could be unrealistic patient expectations or uh, maybe crowded or misaligned teeth. And when orthodontic is the right choice. So uh, when at, like many times like bleaching will work, extreme midline repositioning, which leads to compromised interproximal tissue health, or if you don't have enough remaining tooth structure, in such cases, maybe uh, full coverage crown should be considered. So you have to, uh, there are like many contraindications as well for veneers. What are the advantages of porcelain veneers? Aesthetic stability, stain resistant, stronger and durable. Usually the gingival tissue tolerates porcelain well. So color of the porcelain veneer can be selected such as it makes dark teeth appear whiter. And all these veneers offer a conservative approach of changing a tooth's color and shape. So there are a few disadvantages of porcelain veneers. Very important point is this process is irreversible and it is more costly than composite veneers. This porcelain veneers can be dislodged and fall off and uh, sometimes like not suitable for patients with clenching and grinding habits. In such cases, we need to treat their bruxism first and then treatment plan for veneers. These are not repairable if the chip or crack you have to make a new one in that case. So tooth may become more sensitive to hot and cold foods and beverages, and it is very technique sensitive. On the other hand, advantages of the composite veneers, one visit procedure, less expensive. It has the repair potential, 100% chair side control of the anatomy of the tooth and the minimal irreversible loss of the tooth structure. And the disadvantages of the composite veneers tend to discolor as many patients uh, drink tea, coffee, wine, it wear out quickly. It could have marginal staining, shade matching difficulty, and therefore it often require repair and replacement. So before we start the aesthetic dental treatment, we must examine the patient and our approach should be holistic and then do the treatment planning. And for that, a comprehensive clinical examination is necessary, which may reveal like failing restorations, recurrent decay, parafunctional habits, age consideration, proper shade selection. You should have proper light, like a smile line, they have like nice lights. You can use those lights. Um, Vita shade guides, you can use it. So for the very simple, like patient documentation is necessary, replicable and intuitive documentation following the modern principles of like complete orofacial analysis and interdisciplinary treatment planning. So there are like various apps which allows for photos, videos, uh, documentation, and also has direct connection with other outside devices like scanners and CBCTs and make it very easy to digitalize our patient and bring all the information together as we have seen in the last lecture. And you can put all this inpatient information on a HIPAA compliant cloud storages. So patient's digitization can be done with patients multiple photos from iPad videos and digital scans, CBCT, T scans, computer imaging, which provides patients and uh, dentists with realistic preview of the expected results photographs, preoperative full face smile, retracted frontal view with shade tab, et cetera. And I will explain it at the end, how to put together all this information. Now you know the reason. So why are some faces are worthy of a second look? And the main concept behind this is the golden proportion. There is a golden proportion in those beautiful face, faces. There is a golden proportion in all those things, what we think this thing is beautiful. So if we dwell into the belief that dental aesthetics is both art and science, then we have to ask the question, what is beauty? While the age old, like uh, the beauty uh, age old, like uh, saying, that the beauty is in the eye of a beholder remains true. There is evidence 
that our per perceptions of beauty are determined by the range of factors, including acquired cultural and family values. So one of the earliest theories considered to uh, underpin the science of beauty is that the golden proportion. And the, the ratio is one is to 1.618, attributed to Pythagoras in 530 BC. Uh, Luca Pacioli and Leonardo da Vinci are held responsible for introducing the concept of golden proportion into the art. So one of the da Vinci's best known drawing, the uh, Vitruvian man, is possibly the most famous example of its application. And the man's height is equal to the combined length of his arm, which is together with the ex extended legs touch the circumference of the surrounding circle. The ratio of the length of the sides and squares formed by the, the hands and feet of the radius of the circle is one is to 1.618. And that's the golden proportion. And that's how he created. And that's why we considered whatever is there in this proportion is beautiful. So we need to create all these diagnostic backsips. Those supposed to be beautiful, looks beautiful. It depends on the patient's need. So diagnostic backsips must be performed and approved before any preparation can occur. Mockups or articulated cast and or in mouth sometimes or try in if desired uh, for desired, uh, trying of desired results with direct placement of bonding on the teeth, like single veneer as you can see here. Preparation and diagnostic backsips on the steady cast, stents or composite shells. So you can do like 2D smile design, you can do 3D diagnostics uh, backsips as well. As you can see here, direct and patient smile with the help of digital. So there are like analog backsips as well as like virtual backsips. And nowadays, all these analog backsips methods we can go, we can do digitally as a virtual vaccine. And you know, you can mount all these diagnostic vaccines either on the physical or virtual articulators as well. So we used to draw desired tooth length for and proper midline. Now we use facially driven lines in the digital software. And these, where we take the entire face into the consideration, not only the mouth area. So a couple of tips here. What exactly you need to do? The type, the porcelain veneer preparation tips. The type and shape of the preparation or veneer will depend on why you are doing the veneer in the first place. For example, changing alignment may require more reduction. A single tooth that is in lingual version may require minimal or no reduction. Thickness of the porcelain in relation to bond strength and aesthetics. Occlusion must be considered prior to choosing veneers as working processes and must have posterior support. Orthodontic options must always be discussed with patient prior to making any decisions. Moving teeth with ortho can help minimize tooth reduction if veneers are selected or can totally eliminate tooth reduction um, if alignment is only consideration. Over reduction means dentin bond, which is not so good. Under reduction is inability to escape the dark side, the tetracycline stain, for example. So that is also not good. So you have to have like, it depends on the tooth structure, what exactly you want, and that's how you have to reduce. As you can see here, the thickness of the veneers, which is as thin as your contact lens. The translucency, veneers displaying different amounts of translucency. As you can see, the left veneer is made from very translucent, translucent porcelain. The central veneer has a base layer of the masking dentine porcelain. And the right veneer has an opaque layer, resin cement, bonded to the inner surface of the veneer. And consideration of deep intrinsic stain, tetracycline stain can influence veneer thickness and the final result. So to select a shade, we need to understand the dimensions of the color. What is U? What is value? What is chroma? Moreover, in our natural teeth with age, as we get older, chroma increases and value decreases. And here the modifications involve the lowering value and increasing chroma. So if you are confused between A2 and A3 shade, always choose A2 because you can make A3, but you cannot get it from A3 to A2. So always discuss the shade 
before the preparation. Sometimes teeth whitening will minimize the tooth reduction and the need to block out the dark stains as well. So color and shades determination, like for example, uh, your options, you have various options using universal shade guides, such as Vita shade guide, using custom made shade guide from company, doing a mock-up using color meter or spectrophotometer, using shade guides from the digital scans. Uh, the sequence of our optimum results is like basic shade, the basic shade variations. If you have enamel shade, translucency, location, special effects. So preliminary whitening or bleaching, as you can see here, the bleaching the stained teeth before the veneer placement will improve the final results. And therefore you should consider full mouth whitening to minimize contrast if lighter shades is a part of the patient's goal. We need to look for the other cosmetic considerations like tooth texture, smooth mammalons, is it, is it tooth is textured or incisal edge, natural versus even incisal edges of six anteriors. Sometimes because of parafunctional habits like bruxism or nocturnal bruxism, incisal edge is worn off. There are other common problems with gingiva, excessive root surface exposure. In that case, crown lengthening and root grafting. You should consider that excessive gingival display. You should consider excision of excessive gingiva. Uneven gingival contour. Uh, you can consider like excision of excess gingiva uh, when needed, or maybe loss of papilla in between teeth that time like many people they consider botox so what makes an aesthetic smile note that the position of the teeth in relation to wet dry lip line the position of the teeth plays an important role in lip support or distension the gingival display during smiling and speaking not only buccolingual but mesiodistal uh, need to display buccal corridor lips must be able to go around to teeth. So lips should be symmetrical, like your lip line supposed to be symmetrical. Pleasing smiles should ideally show canine to canine or sometimes like premolar to premolar uh, smile. As you can see, there are like different types of smile arcs and have a look at these different types of smile arc here, the convex, curved, plain or straight, sometimes inverted or reverse. So you have to consider like what is exactly how the patient is. In relation to the gender and the teeth display, in, in the literature, it has mentioned that 75 to 80% of maxillary incisors showing women show more of the maxillary incisors, whereas men typically show more mandibular teeth. And the distance between central to lateral incisor edge in women is one millimeter to 1.5 millimeter, whereas in men, it's 0 0.5 to one millimeter. So then there are like different types of buccal corridors. As you can see here in this all this A, B, C, D, B, C, D, this pictures, B is like white buccal corridor. Those little triangles on the corner of the mouth, those are buccal corridors. C is intermediate buccal corridor and D is narrow buccal corridor. So we have to discuss with the patient what exactly patient wants, what exactly, what you should tell the patient what exactly lo will look good according to your cosmetic dentistry knowledge. As you can see here, uh, buccal corridor consideration, a photo shows no buccal corridor. So if you're from a modern family and you can see uh, Halle Berry and the background. So Hollywood type appearance, broad and white smile. I would say like, that's typical Hollywood type of appearance. But Bollywood type of appearance, you should have like a buccal corridor. We need to know like, does your patient want this type of smile or more natural type of smile, all right? So additional or preoperative considerations like parental status, caries index, high decay index may require full coverage instead of a veneer. Uh, home, home care considerations and maintenance as well, patient compliance, occlusion, edge to edge occlusion is highly traumatic and veneers would not be uh, a good treatment selection. Cross bite and hybrid bite occlusions may also require a different treatment selection. And for that, the type of 
patient should be evaluated. Many times patients who are requesting multiple veneers and full smile modifications have high expectations and are very uh, particular in outcome. And therefore, informed consent is important. So possible complications which may include, but not limited to, post-operative sensitivity, marginal discoloration, fracture of porcelain, debonding, wear of opposing teeth. And inform the patient of all these possible disadvantages. As with all prosthetic treatment, preoperative informed consent and releases must cover uh, possibility of root canal, extension, extended tooth sensitivity, future maintenance, and care of veneers and continued whitening for surrounding teeth, uh, whatever is necessary for that particular case. And if this was done prior to veneer placement and original shade was modified, that as well. So also, for me, it's very important that a smile is not about the mouth, lips, or teeth. It's all about your face. And that's why we do facially driven smile design. So we need to attend, do attention uh, should be given like not only to the shape and shade of the teeth, but pay attention to the skin color, shape of the face, and lip lines. Laminates can help emphasize or minimize features like uh, long face, long teeth, short face, short teeth. We have to look for skin color as well like dark tan or longevity of the tan before shade selection. If the dark tan is transition or transient and the skin color will revert to the lighter tone, veneers that look bright and high in value to the dark skin and yellow and low in value in lighter skin tone. As you can see, you know this part is all about our digital smile design. The digital way to correct smile, the shape, color, contours, and alignment. These are like 2D smile designing, as you can see in the lower pictures. And there is like 3D smile designing on the top right. And you have seen this, like how we make, this is like completely digital waxing, what we are trying to do. And uh, many people um, around the globe, they are using all this technology to do 3D smile designing and give this uh, nice spatially driven smile designing uh, uh, it, 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 a, another experience to the patient. So you should consider giving multiple veneers because the problem of the shade matching is minimized in multiple veneers. And it's easier to treat two central incisors and then attempt to match the veneer to a natural tooth, right? So for tooth preparation, amount of tooth structure removed during preparation is determined by shape, size, and the color or shade of the tooth. So correction of mild overlapping requires preparation through the contact to allow contour alterations. So uh, mal-aligned teeth make Preparation guides essential and reduction guides from BACSIP. Reduction guide provides assistance in determining proper reduction. A traditional reduction guide demonstrates uniform preparation steps, uh, definitive porcelain veneers uh, restorations. As you can see here, the smile at four year follow. And those are like traditional like reduction guides. You can see the first picture. There are like different types of doing this reduction guide. I would like to do uh, the reduction guide at and the cut the reduction guide at two different uh, places, like one in gingival and one in the middle. Incisal part is already open, so you know how much is your incisal reduction there. But uh, for the gingival reduction and the middle reduction, you can see if you if you cut it like horizontally on the guide, you will get a flap, and you can see how your uh, reduction guide and how exactly how much you are redu uh, reducing from that particular tooth. So for the tooth preparation and routine preparation, the facial enamel is reduced approximately 0.3 to 0.5 millimeter. As you can see in this picture, the dark stained teeth should be reduced 0.7 for increased porcelain thickness. And no prep veneers, I'm not good, uh, like no prep veneers, uh, I'm not a fan of it, but uh, no prep veneers option in limited cases, conservative and reversible. Many times you can use it, 
but not for all. So depth cut burrs allow for uniform removal of enamel uh, from the facial aspect of the teeth. As you can see on the right hand side, those are my uh, two go burrs. Uh, guided tooth preparation, the cervical area, you should go for like 0.3 millimeter. The middle or incisal middle area, you can go for uh, 0.5 and incisal third as well, 0.5. One millimeter, 1.5 millimeter, or sometimes like two millimeter incisor reduction is necessary. Depends on which tooth you're working on. The strongest and most predictable bond, always remember this, the strongest and most predictable bond is to enamel. So more dentin is exposed during preparation, weaker the bond. Now there are like no prep veneers, no prep veneers outcome is like keeping the layers that can resist the acid edge, which is hypermineralized, over contouring, gingival irritation, high failure rate, or uh, more stress on the veneers. So uh, these are like, there are a couple of things like protocol and guidelines that teeth should be in the right position, teeth should not have severe interproximal undercuts, uh, the shade should be close to what patient wants. And if you want to light, lighten them or increase the value, we should bleach beforehand. The shape of the teeth should be more squarish or and like not very triangular. In case of recession, if you want to perform root coverage, this design may be very difficult to implement due to undercuts uh, in the root area. Uh, use translucent or clear cement uh, gives most like uh, nice appearance. The predictable results and advantages is like tooth tissue preservation. Uh, the best bond you can get because it's like no prep, everything is on enamel as it is bonded to the enamel. No post operative sensitivity. Most of the times, no need for temporization, no need for uh, anesthetic to cement. Greater patient satisfaction, the wow factor. There are like disadvantages. This is not the method used for extreme uh, correction of crowding. Uh, cannot be used if there are like deep interproximal undercuts. We cannot change the color trans like tremendously. Uh, remember, we need to at least 0 0.2 millimeter of ceramic for every shade change. And that's why when we do shade change, instead of 0.5, we do 0.7 reduction. So we need that 0.2 millimeter. It's difficult to cement. And this is what happened with me. I mean, uh, I was like, wow, this is no prevenir. So I'm going to do that. And I reduced it and then I got, I got a call from my lab and lab person was like, uh, Doc, your veneer is like little thin, this very thin. I was like, yeah, but we need that much thickness. Uh, a certain thickness is important. And I was like, okay, so now what? So why don't you give me two uh, veneers in that case? Because I cannot call the patient again. So now give me two veneers one veneer with uh, like 0.3, just entire, like a no prep veneer and a little bit, at least 0 0.3, 0 0.5 uh, thickness, another veneer. And he did it for me. And I was like, okay, uh, let's see, let me try and patient smile. I tried the no prep veneer, which was very thin, very thin. And while cementing, uh, I broke that veneer. So uh, those are, very important uh, aspect, like while cementing, you broke the veneer for no prep veneer if those are very thin. So you should you should know how much is the thickness. And that's how I learned, like um, it's difficult to cement all these like no prep veneers and more expensive to produce so that like it's so add, it adds to the treatment cost as well. So for uh, the, another thing we need to look for is gingival finish lines. For maxillary teeth, the placement of the gingival finish, like gingival margin of finish lines of the veneers should routinely be placed at the gingival crest or slightly uh, subgingival, like half a millimeter. Incisal edge included. The incisal edge reduction, the amount of in incisal edge uh, reduction for maxillary teeth must be no less than one millimeter for porcelain strength. Two millimeter incisor reduction allows for maximum aesthetics unless tooth is too short. 
Not reducing the incisal edge for anterior teeth leads to more bulky and less natural appearance. So th there is a survey, and this survey uh, is done by um, Dr. Si Yin Chai. And in this survey, this, uh, it shows that two most common incisal preparation designs provided the butt joint and feather edge joint. So the feather edge and butt joint, these are two different designs. The clinical studies have identified the incisal ceramic um, area, basically the incisal area is the most common location for ceramic fracture, okay? And in this study, they mentioned like the bird joint is the, is the uh, it has more uh, out, like nice outcome. So I would prefer bird joint, but there are like, as you can see, window feather edged, then bird joint and then palatal chamfer, or they also say like lingual approach um, in certain cases, lingualized uh, veneers as well. Now look at this, the preparation design, the arch form, tapered line angles, we need to consider like where are your, your line angles, are, okay? Uh, roll in the incisal edges, break contacts, when to break contacts, that is also necessary. So veneer preparation on the mandibular incisor, the facial reduction is around, again, 0.3 to 0.5 millimeter and is completed in multiple planes. And the incisal reduction must be 1.5 uh, millimeter such that the final porcelain restoration is of adequate thickness to withstand the forces of occlusion. And the gingival margin is at least one millimeter incisor to the gingival crest. So extension of the veneer preparation into the subcontact area for improved aesthetics. As you can see here, the finish line is brought as far as possible in the lingual direction without breaking the contact, as you can see on the upper right picture, All right? So the preparation should not be finished in the interproximal contact area, but should stop just facial to the contact area. For teeth that are not aligned correctly, and if the clinician is worried about interproximal margin of staining, staining um, then the finish line is extended through the contacts. And for those, like for teeth uh, that are not aligned correctly, or if the clinician is worried about interproximal marginal staining, then the finish line is extended through the contacts, as you can see uh, the bottom picture. And these are the finish preps look like. Remember, your margin should never be finished on an existing composite restoration. When you are done with prep, the retraction card is placed to expose all gingival cavus surface margins for maxillary incisors. For mandible incisors, the preparation are at least 0.5 millimeter incisor to the free gingival margin, and you don't need to use retraction card. Now, the provisional restorations, taste drive, so which improves in term aesthetics, decreases sensitivity, provides essential diagnostic information such as color, shape, length, thickness, and incisor edge configuration, which allows patient to test drive for uh, feedback, and when test drive is completed, take an impression of provisional restoration and send it to the lab to reproduce. You can see here the provisional restoration, a clear polyvinyl siloxane matrix produced from a modified wax up. A clear matrix serves uh, as a reduction guide, as well as the matrix for composite provisional veneer fabrication. And bisacryl resin is allowed to cure uh, demonstrating the ideal final contours and location of the two structure in labio version. So uh, this is like before time and the trial of size and uh, size and shape using clear stent. Uh, now the single tooth provisional restorations with freehand composite placement. So the small area is etched with phosphoric acid for 15 seconds, washed and then dried. Adhesive is placed over entire preparation and light cure. A large increment of resin composite is placed and contoured and restoration is then cured. So uh, for this entire procedure, like there are like a couple of 18, 19 steps, like uh, 
the chief complaint of this patient was like improper aesthetic appearance and then uh, the lateral incisor has three year old uh, class four restoration. Uh, the value of the restoration was like, slightly like lower than the tooth. So the integration of the restoration was good, but the contact point and adhesion was uh, okay. Uh, the treatment plan decision, I chose to keep the old composite restoration in place and to do composite veneer restoration without any preparation. In this case, we decided to uh, use a single mass composite restoration by uh, Brilliant Everglow A2, um, cold, teen, cold teen shade. Then to have the correct finish, the finish of the composite veneer at the cervical level, uh, we placed like the B4 clamp and this clamp helped a lot to move away the rubber, rubber dam that interfere with the cervical area. And after the sandblasting of the composite, and the enamel, phosphoric acid was applied for 30 seconds and then washed out. For this particular, we used like one coat, seven universal uh, from Coltine. I've noticed that during the time of layering procedure can be, uh, can be a big uh, disadvantage. And at the level of level between the layers, very often appear gaps and bubbles and to have very nice smooth surface and to spend less time during finishing and polishing, uh, I recommend you to use least layers as possible. Uh, for composite veneer reconstruction, I prefer only one layer for composite uh, to obtain a very anatomical outcome. And you should put the proper amount of composite and use increment, like use your instruments uh, that can help you, uh, like uh, to sculpt and shape of the veneer. Uh, Composcope is a uh, very good uh, from Smile Line. I'm very comfortable with the anterior brushes. Uh, those compost brushes are really good. Uh, I use this in procedure. And this is the final outcome after like, you can say shape of the composite and the anterior composite uh, brush. So uh, like after light curing uh, of the composite, finish the surface. And then uh, the first step of finishing is to define the transition lines. So to see better, we marked it like the pencil. Very nice tip is to use like um, LM or a XSO instrument to remove a very smooth way to round the area and transition lines level. So also this instrument can can be used like at the pro in like proximal level at the buckle area of the vineyard as well. And then a nice smooth uh, I can say stone can be used with low speed. At the time spend with this step is lower because the nice shape of the composite during composite modeling. And after finishing, uh, use uh, Diatek Speed Guard rubber wheels. And this, as you can see at the bottom, uh, in this case, um, we don't use any paste or any polishing rotary instruments. The polish results is was amazing. Like uh, in my opinion, uh, the nice appearance with the texture, with your attention and care of the composite modeling, that's what I usually do. And uh, we should use like as much as possible the flowable properties of the material and less possible the, on the shaping and rotary instruments. So uh, the final results after like you can say 65 minutes of the chair side and no anesthesia, uh, maybe the handling is, uh, okay, it's not the best in my opinion, but the natural value appearance and the easy polishing compensate uh, uh, the outcome. So these are the outcomes, as you can see here. Now provisional materials for like multiple veneers and you can uh, use acrylic resin, composite, Luxatemp, ProTemp, uh, ProTemp 3 or Garand. Uh, there are like direct light cured temporary composites as well. Um, as you can see in the picture, these are like uh, direct uh, light cured temporary composites. And this like water clear silicon impression, like matrix material is used in a disposable tray without adhesive over the like, diagnostic wax up to create matrix for temp like temporalization of the preparation. And then uh, affinity crystal silicon impression over the diagnostic wax up clearly shows the underlying model. And this facilitated precise intraoral like placement, uh, as you can see. Uh, so the affinity crystal is removed from the tray and is cut back 
into the lingual, one millimeter short from the lingual incisal edge. Cavus surface margin of the anticipated veneer preparation to allow like for access to remove the excess um, lingual temporary material and minimize post insertion finishing. And uh, we can see like uh, inc incisal like intro light cured temporary composite is placed uh, minimally first in the incisal incisal half like half to one millimeter followed by the appropriate body color of intro composite. So every second prepared tooth is spot etched uh, by ultra edge ultra dent and then the cent uh, in the center of the tooth and DE bond resin visco is applied to the enamel uh, to seal the surface to create bond and in the etched area. And uh, after that, like uh, glazing, okay, uh, you can see you can use stem glaze, uh, can be do uh, and cured with a full spectrum like curing light and uh, to add like a lifelike luster. So there is another one is uh, you can see, uh, you can see here, uh, rapid simplified veneer provisional RSVP system. And uh, so this RSVP system, as you can see, uh, those once you have this luster, like uh, from the previous thing, uh, the final luster can be created with the discs, uh, like Cosmodent or surface glaze, like Visco, or um, post in veneers of the day insertion, the cementation, and creating cuspid and anterior guidance. So uh, the anterior dentition of the patient with, like you can say, incisal wear, shortening of the cusp and lateral protrusive wear facet on the lateral. In such cases, uh, as you can see in this rapid veneer, rapid simplified veneer provisional system, RSVP system. I'm like, I personally, uh, I never uh, like uh, become a big fan of this system. I like the digital way and traditional way, which I learned and then digital way, but this is another system, which is just to, just for your information, uh, which many people, they use it. And um, in this like provisional restoration using self-cure bisacylic resin as well. Uh, this is one common method for provisional provisionalization of multiple veneer preparation and uh, the use of bisacryl based self-cure resin like uh, Luxatemp plus or Zen by Zenit or integrative Desply or ProTemp 3 Garand by 3M ESP. Uh, we used in conjunction with a prefabricated matrix the matrix is typically fabricated from the diagnostic wax ups, what you get. Now, diagnostic wax ups can be your traditional diagnostic wax up or maybe digital diagnostic wax up, and then you got like a uh, printed model. So, uh, once you have this like matrix, um, tip, tip, like from diagnostic wax up or direct impression of the patient's own teeth, and when using the patient existing dentition, the stiff alternate or a more stable, accurate, and reusable polyvinyl cellulose impression material can be used to direct directly impress uh, the teeth prior to the preparation. So, as discussed above, um, the dentist may first choose, and this like all these procedures, to modify the teeth by shaping or adding composites so that provisionals duplicate what the dentist thinks the case should look like in its final form, when significant form, length, or positional changes are required. And it is advantageous like to work from diagnostic back steps. As you can see, like a uh, hand mixed putty type, affinity putty, you can use or Siltec, uh, Siltec putty by Ivoclor uh, Vivadent, yeah, that can be used. Um, then like aesthetic wax up of the patient, uh, then you can show like recontouring, or realignment of the anterior teeth. Uh, this putty polyvinyl siloxin material is adapted over the aesthetic wax up to minimally, minimally cover the gingival tissue and give rest position of unprepared, unprepped teeth. So the putty matrix is then trimmed and then uh, like note that like you have to uh, remember the adaptation of polyvinyl siloxin to the interproximal and the tissue areas, which is difficult to duplicate the alternate impression. So if the patient, patient's teeth do not require the aesthetic wax up or mock up, 
is done in mouth directly, a quick setting polyvinylsiloxane impression can be taken in a disposable tray. So uh, after that, like the self-cure bicyclic composite resin is injected into the putty matrix with a tip left into the mat, uh, minimized to formation of air bubble. So always like put the tip inside, don't put it like from over the top and can carry it to the mouth and seat it firmly. Uh, once you have completed in the tip and then uh, carry it in the mouth and then uh, make sure it's completely seated as you can see in the uh, fifth, sixth picture. Once it's set, uh, the big bisacral like temporarily is carefully removed from the mouth and then it can be trimmed, finished and polished without like compromising prepared margins or the veneers. And the finished veneers temporarily is sandblasted uh, on the lingual uh, to improve retention. Unfilled resin is placed to cover the flowable composite. The provisionals are temporarily bonded to the preparation using spot bonding techniques, as you can see here. And then the entire surface is etched, prepared, uh, tooth is coated with resin adhesive, uh, light cured. The uh, facial and incisal areas of the clear matrix are filled with resin composite. The filled matrix is placed over the prep teeth. Floss and uh, floss threader is used in each gingival embrasure to ensure patency and overhang free margin. Facial and incisal embrasures are refined with thin diamond disc. And uh, I personally like this disc, but you have to make sure you have covered patient's lip and uh, tongue because sometimes, many times, this is like, otherwise it's like, uh, it could be a, a disaster. Uh, but you have to make sure you are covering properly and giving patient inst instructions that what you are doing uh, and stay still for that particular procedure at that time. Um, so these are the mock-ups. Uh, as you know, and we can do these mockups. And once uh, now these are like traditional way, but now we can do all these mockups the digital way. And the digital mockups will give you uh, like three D printed shells. And those once you get like for example, you have patient, you scan the tooth, you prep the tooth, you scan the tooth, you did digital smile designing, as I said, as I told you previously. Uh, so once you know your digital, completely digital smile designing, uh, the, your digital wax up is ready. You can print those wax ups. Th those are like, we call it shell, like shell mockup. And we can get like shells like this. And this is called the power of, we can say a digital dentistry or digital smile designing or uh, copy paste dentistry. And this concept basically, uh, on my based on my experience as a cosmetic dentist and uh, going into digital dentistry, a digital dentist, um, I also worked with many ceramists when I was like uh, pursuing a couple of courses. And no matter what, how good dentist or a cosmetic dentist you are, still you have limitations and like analog workflow. And we have to deal with like for me uh, when I started to get exposed to the digital dentistry. One of the most powerful things to me was to transform projects into the reality and give more predictability through these two concepts like copy paste dentistry and power of overlapping. So this is what you can do. Like you can take a picture, uh, you can take videos of the patient. And now the, the veneer placement, the final veneer placements are tried in marginal fit and correct interproximal context. Teeth are cleaned, edged, and with phosphoric acid rinsed, treated with bonding agent and air dried. The inner surface of the veneer must be edged with hydrofluoric acid. <clears throat> Veneers are coated with silane and uh, then bonding agent. Uh, Veneers is then filled with resin composite, luting cement, and the veneer is seated. So, Main important uh, point is here, and this is very uh, nice picture, is for veneer and tooth etching, the anatomy of the porcelain veneer. The veneer pre-edged with hydrofluoric acid and tooth is with uh, phosphoric acid. And the, uh, that you need to understand, like was like permissed enamel, etched enamel, uh, bonding resin, leading composite, bonding, bonding resin, silane and etched veneer. 
Okay, so the tooth edged with phosphoric and veneers pre-edged with hydrofluoric acid. Techniques will vary uh, based on uh, bonding agents and luting agents and type of veneer. But uh, so luting cements, uh, the, which are like many available with different degrees of translucency and viscosity. Translucent cements are the standard. The more opaque cements tend to block the natural tooth color, therefore decreasing the natural appearance of the tooth. So you need to know what you exactly, uh, uh, what you want to use, where you want to use. So each kit has its own instructions. Uh, I personally like this uh, Vario link veneers. Uh, those cements are really good. And uh, these are a couple of cases like before and after. As you can see here, uh, this is like uh, tetracycline stains and then the composite veneer on the top of it. Um, this is like another central incisor. On tooth number nine, there is uh, discoloration. Then tooth wear, patient definitely had bruxism as you can see here. Another one with a like re restored uh, class four restoration on tooth number eight, central incisor. Then uh, the alignment of maxillary teeth, which is also possible uh, in limited, uh, yeah, but we do have li li limitations. Otherwise, you need to send it to the ortho, or maybe in many cases, what you can do, you can uh, put that patient on aligners like Invisalign. And once that once we get the desired results, because orthodontist can do the alignment, but the ultimately like shape of the tooth, uh, you can change as a cosmetic dentist. And many times you need to consider like patient's face into consideration and how those like how that person will get beautiful aligned and a nicely shaped teeth. Uh, as you can see, this is peg shape lateral. Tooth number 10, uh, small uh, pace uh, or space teeth. Uh, acid erosion case. Crowded and aged teeth. Direct composite. Extensive decay. Space closure diastema cases. Or uh, maybe you can see this like a veneer on tooth number nine. So uh, what are the failures? And the fractures of the veneer could be failure, unfavorable occlusion, significant parafunction, large dentin bonding surfaces, bonding to existing restoration, or failed to uh, failed bonding like leakage or chromogenic bacteria, marginal discoloration. Uh, an influx of oral fluids, minimal preparation, bulky or over contouring. And we need to con like consider like how we are doing, uh, how exactly how the, that's why uh, this veneer is like technique sensitive. So debonding of the veneer, leaving resin composite bonded to the tooth is a result of inadequate porcelain etching or contaminated uh, silane, as you can see in this picture. The resin composite attached to the debonded veneer indicates a predominantly dentin, dentinal substrate. Exposed dentin surface provides a poor bonding substrate for veneers, increasing the risk of fracture and adhesive failure of dentin bonded veneer. So the uh, change of the shape, change the shape and the shade, as you can do with the 2D small design and 3D small design, okay? And we know like uh, we live in the age of now, like Amazon Prime, Netflix, everything is right there at your fingertips. And we want things almost immediately. Like, have you ever thought about for veneer treatment, how many efforts we need to do? Explanations of all procedures to the patient and all. And we can literally show the patient right away. And you don't need to wait weeks 
or vaccines to get it from the labs. And we can show all these things instantly. And that's, that's why today's lecture is all about like digital smile designing for laminates and veneers. So as you know, like you learned about this, the 2D smile journey is like facial flow, the smile frame, treatment planning, and the motivation of the patient. For the 3D smile design, you know, the initial, the tree design, mockups, and the final. So the new uh, dentistry, uh, new standard, as you know, like patient management, facial flow, uh, smile simulation, 3D design, and then we have the team to communicate. Communicate with your all team, like you can communicate with your um, dentist, your other dentist, you can communicate with your uh, specialist or periodontist, orthodontist, uh, dental lab technicians. So the, this is another clinical workflow uh, is uh, done by one of my friend, Justin. And uh, as you can see, he does for, like many 3D smile designing cases, uh, is a very nice technician uh, I've ever come, come across, uh, Justin McLaurin. So there are like why we need this smile simulation and why we need facial flow. So smile simulation to motivate your patient, to like plan the aesthetic treatment, reduce the risk of mistakes, and we can get predictable results. And what about the facial flow? As you can see on the background, like there is red and white, red and green. Uh, so why we need the facial flow? Like nature knows the best. Facial harmony. We need to consider. We need to consider when we do smile designing. How beautiful, like that person's uh, facial features are. Uh, like imperfections that we need to like, you know, beautiful imperfection. That's why like beautiful imperfection, we can match or uh, connect those two together. Natural smiles. So in Journal of uh, Prosthetic Dentistry, uh, the cl clinical report, the facial flow concept as done by Dr. Christian Koshman and uh, Dr. Uh, Silva. So the, an organic orofacial analysis, the vertical component, and this is the abstract that orofacial analysis has been used by dentists for many years. And the process involves applying mathematical rules, geometric principles, and straight lines to create either parallel or perpendicular references based on the true horizon and our natural head position. And these reference lines guide treatment planning and smile design for restorative treatments to achieve harmony between new smile and the face. So the goal is to obtain harmony and not symmetry. Faces are asymmetrical entities and uh, asymmetrical entities and because of that cannot be analyzed using purely straight lines. So in this article, like they mentioned a more uh, natural, organic and dynamic process of evaluation as uh, they presented to minimize errors and generate harmoniously balanced smile instead of perfect and mathematical smile. Got it? And so that's why the facial flow is determined by orientation of glabula, nose bridge, philtrum, and chin. As you can see, the green side and the right side, how you where your facial, which side is more prominent. Okay. So if, if this patient, as you can see here, in this patient, the facial flow determined by the orientation of, as you can see, uh, nose, uh, glabella, nose bridge, phenotrum, and chin, and either it's on like facial flow directional movement point to uh, right or green side. So facial flow is giving us the guideline, which side is your face is going. As you can see in this face, straight facial flow, absent of red or green side, completely straight, no red or green side. Very few people, they have like straight facial flow, but we can consider, we can, once we know the facial and that's why we are doing not only teeth, we are doing this facially driven smile. 
As you can see, the digital vaccine uh, simulated in patients' face according to facial flow, uh, trial restorations to evaluate smile design, and the dental midline orientation, uh, following facial flow rather than the facial midline. Definitive restorations respecting facial flow. So, uh, according to the paper, what does the paper say? The smile design has to be harmonic with the face, not symmetric or not perfect. So, facial treatment must consider a large picture where the eyes, nose, lips, teeth, philtrum, chin, and other facial structures interact. And uh, symmetry has been used in dentistry as a guideline because it, it, it is uh, mathematical, predictable, objective, and reproducible. And studies have reported that uh, participants prefer a natural asymmetrical face to a mirrored symmetrical face. So other publications reinforce the impact of some facial structures such as nose and chin in the perception of smile aesthetics. So uh, the centrals uh, points to the opposite direction of the facial flow. As you can see here, the centrals point to the opposite direction of the facial flow. It falls into the red side and uh, can create some visual tension and discomfort. So in this patient, in addition to the angulation of uh, like the dental midline, uh, the tip of angulation of central incisors and the right lateral incisor also pointed to the right side, creating considerable like visual tension. And therefore, this patient from like uh, you can see the frontal view was good uh, candidate for orthodontic treatment to correct the dental like midline angulation and the angulation of lateral incisor avoiding the direct right side. So you can do like you can think about for this patient all right, uh, I would go with maybe Invisalign right now, uh, slightly, and then instead of CAN, because if your midline is shifted, it's fine. But if in certain uh, limit, two to four millimeter, not more than that. But if your dental midline, if your is canted, then it's a problem. Then you need to correct that CAN. Then we need to consider about the papillar curve as well. I don't know why he's saying uh, like this, but yeah, the papilla curve is like 30% and 50%. Um, so based on the conclusion, like what you got gather, you, you will get a clear picture about like what are the issues of the patient and the possible solutions. So uh, with this, like the smile simulation the, is the first step to start the case. Analyze the patient face, proportion, incisal curve, midline shift, lower lip curve, uh, analyze the smile frame, uh, create facially driven smile simulation, like following all these digital workflows. And uh, the papilla curve, uh, lower lip line, as you can see here, and uh, those are like those supposed to be parallel to each other. Uh, it, these are like a couple of like other smile frames and case analysis. Uh, these are like 2D smile designing. And I'm going to show you how to do that as well with the help of artificial intelligence. Uh, these are other like suddenly uh, uh, different, like you can get immediate uh, response from the patient as well when he sees that patient's front picture and then the, all the smile designing what you can perform in front of the patient on the chair side. Uh, so that kind of like experience gives the patient a nice, uh, uh, like the patient gets perceived value, what exactly he's going for, what he's going, he's signing up for the treatment. And you as a dentist to be able to design a more like a harmonic smile in a structured way. And that's why these are like the new smile uh, design concepts, uh, it's a smile donator concept as well, as we learned about this. And we know the nature knows the best, um, like authentic, always uh, outshines synthetic. And these are the like new uh, standards. The smile donator concept is there as well. Uh, Traditionally, false teeth have been known to have an unnatural appearance instead of we should take inspiration from Mother Nature's beautiful imperfections. And the technology that we have been developing like enables us to do this and allow us natural beauty to outcome, to become like more affordable uh, to all. 
and this is what we do uh, like the emotional dentistry and uh, all this like when we do all this emotional dentistry uh, we do digital smile designing it's not giving every patient the same result it's about creating the unique smile that suits a patient's features and delivers confidence and health for their unique circumstances and the emotional dentistry is a great facet of this like uh, showing the, the patient what their individual smile can look like and how it can be restored but thanks to digital smile design uh, like the patient are not limited to traditionally norms what considered is an attractive smile and we can enable patients to like break free be happy and truly accept their own smiles and this innovative like process uh, enables the smile design that can change the aspects that uh, bother the patient and keeps what makes them unique and when we do this like we should no like i'll tell you like how to do this uh, emotional dentistry presentations as well for the patient so uh, moving to the emotional side of the dentistry when we talk about emotional dentistry of course the, the important thing is how we need to present the treatment protocol in front of the patient and that they would like to get this treatment done so you can have like your clinic logo on the slides like this or keynote or powerpoint you can uh, like full front of picture pre op patient's name uh yeah like video or uh, images of pre op as you can see here uh many times like you can once i like to take videos so that uh, from the videos i can capture uh, photos as well at certain times like when you see like patient if you tell the patient uh, smile just smile the patient will smile um in a conscious way but if you tell the patient talk and then i'm going to record and then smile um uh, and you are just like talking to the patient uh having uh, a nice like uh, jokes and patient is smiling at that time uh it's like th then you will get to know what exactly how that patient is smiling so you need to understand that so understand the patient's smile and these are like pre op uh, videos you can have like your intraoral scans screenshots uh as well uh like from ppc presentations uh smile simulation from the smile design apps as you can see here before and after and i will show you like how to do this uh, smile designing uh like so that patients knows what exactly patient wanted and this is what we took it we we can send this as uh, to the patient as well uh smile frame from the pc presentation um as uh, you can see here the on the right hand side uh the small smile frames and uh, left in the center there is a picture of the cast a virtual cast with a smile frame the same smile frame uh, more images or videos of pre op like clinical or sometimes you can look into that patient's uh, social uh, platforms as well like uh, instagram facebook and then check how that patient smiles uh many times the uh, patients are very conscious and they uh i have seen one of the patient and uh, that patient's instagram's uh instagram and i saw that uh, that patient was like smiling only on one side always all the photos uh thousands of followers but all the photos only on one side because patient was conscious to smile on the left side from the left side and uh, taking the picture from the left side so uh, there are a couple of like certain things what you need to consider and why exactly that patient is conscious because um, maybe a stained tooth is there and that's why patient doesn't like to smile um, from the left side. Um, images of the 3D design from the PC to explain the mockup uh, to the patient and um, what exactly we are doing and to the technicians. Uh, our technician is doing, if you are, if you are not doing mockups in-house then you can send it to the lab and lab people can whatever they've give it to you you can explain to the patient the 3d printed models uh as you know that the 3d printed models uh the how the 3d printing works you learned in the last lecture uh the picture uh of the mock-up itself the 3d printed models as you can see here 
and the 3D printed shells. Uh, pictures of the mock-up again. These are shells on the right-hand side. And the patient's name, uh, you can put like emotional pictures, frontal, pre-op, and this is you today. And the smile reveal. Now the frontal mock-up, and this is your new smile. And you can take the videos for that, like how a uh, patient feel after looking at that patient's smile. And then you can capture those moments. Those are like, that's called, that's why it, it's known as emotional dentistry. So the emotional pictures, like of the smile reveal video, as you can see here, uh, the, when patient sees uh, the smile, the happiness, uh, what patient gets like with a new beautiful uh, smile. And uh, so the emotional pictures before and after video of the same side, uh, that reveals uh, the beauty of cosmetic dentistry, digital dentistry, emotional part of the dentistry, the copy paste dentistry, um, the complete uh, orofacial analysis, uh, more harmonious smile, facially driven smile. And uh, you can see here the patient's name, initial and the mock-up before and after videos of the same. Uh, emotional pictures, after pictures or video screenshots. As I said, emotional pictures, after pictures or video screenshots again. Uh, emotional pictures or video screenshots again, this. And sometimes you can take the selfie with the doctor. Best mock-up image. And then yeah, the problem journey, like you can show the clinical findings, you can add in the presentation, you can, uh, after the uh, problems, we start the solution journey and the treatment plan, sim uh, like any simulations from the planning center case present, like planning center presentations, if you have any uh, that you can put as well. And it's always nice to take the feedback from the patients. And then uh, these kind of like feedbacks are, uh, important uh, to you know keep going keep working when you'll you like what you do so uh, don't forget to take the feedbacks and by all this like digital small designing uh, and uh, copy pasting nature into our designs and uh, with the facially driven smile uh, we are relearning the natural aesthetics all imperfections uh, we are well, like accepting the differences, customizing smiles and using like infinite libraries of natural dentition to fabricate our modern restorations. And therefore, uh, again, like smile design is all about health and confidence, not perfect symmetry or perfect aesthetics. And uh, I, at last, I would like to mention this under the sky, we are one family, everyone smiles in the same language. And the, uh, if you have any questions or concerns, you can contact me on my email or website. Uh, and thank you. And I would like to uh, show you a little demo on the small design. And then I'll come back here. moment.
that a demo that you're trying to show us? Yes, I'm trying to give you the demo uh, for everybody. Okay, um, let me share my screen right now. And all of you can see the demo. Can you see the screen? Yes, sir. Yes, Dr. Okay, perfect. So uh, this is from my mobile. Uh, I'm just like sharing this screen, sorry for the delay. Uh, so as you can see here, and for this patient, particular patient, um, we can have like the smile curve on, the, uh, on this like smile frame, there are various softwares which you can use. You can take the patient's frontal picture with a smile. And once you have this picture, uh, like symmetry is on, the this is symmetry, we can turn it off. The picture for rotation for the facial flow, as you can see the facial flow here, uh, you can make sure your glabella, tip of the nose, uh, corner of the mouth, philtrum, and the chin, those are the points which we already like uh, detected by artificial intelligence uh, from that picture. Once you have that, like you can directly uh, go for a generic smile. Uh, to generate smile, you like because of help of artificial intelligence, we already know like young and triang uh, triangular shape of the patient's face. But here, uh, going back, and we need to adjust this patient's uh, lower lip line, incisal edge, papilla curve, and uh, the upper lip line as well. So uh, we need to do basically this is like our smile designing part. So as I'm doing here, I'm just shifting. Can, can you see this? Like I'm shifting this patient's uh, smile line and this is like a template. We can check with the patient's midline, facial midline. So that's how we are doing the facial, we are uh, facially driven smile. We can change the height. You can change facial symmetry on if you want, or you can change it the way patient's lower lip line follows. You can change the patient's ratio, height to width ratio on the left and height to width ratio on the right. Now you can see better. You can change the patient's buccal corridor as well. Buckle corridor on the left side. Then you can go for the generate smile. Now you can mark the lips.
you can go with the dominance if the way you want so your central incisors are pretty dominant here or less dominant according to the what exactly patient wants you can shift you can change the midline you can go back and check again if you want the smile curve we can change the smile curve there are various templates you can change the tooth any particular tooth if you want to change it you can do that as well You can go with the colors. You can select the frame. If you want any particular teeth, you can select the tooth. You can check again with the facial flow. If there is some discrepancy, you can change it, change the position the way you want according to the facial flow. And you can check the shades. And you can do the smile simulation for the patient before and the after. So how exactly your smile and shade is going to change with this before and after. And yeah, if you want, if you want to go back, you can change it, change it again. You can change the colors. If patient doesn't want that bright white smile, color going all the way yellow. And you can show the patient that's your before and after is going to be. And you can share. You can go with the side by side presentation for the patient and for the lab. So what exactly your before smile and the after smile. And later on, you can save it. You can save the case patient with the patient's info and send to the lab. And another thing is, if you don't want to do like all these things, you can directly uh, go with AI generated smile. So uh, I just want to show you here. The symmetry is on. You can directly go for the generated smile and click generate. See so this generate, you are marking the lips, you are rescanning the lips, and this is completely AI generated smile for this particular patient. And you can show it to real quick demonstration for the AI generated smile for this patient. 
All right. Just a moment. That's it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Could we just have uh, Dr. Akshay? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I think the question, there was one in the chat and there are two in the question and answer ones. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the students have asked that what is the name of the app for smile designing? Uh, so there are various apps, uh, digital smile design app, smile fire app, uh, three shape. They have their own app, smile design pro. Uh, there are various smile designing app. I work lot. They have their, I work last smile. I will smile their app for 3d, uh, capturing, um, 3d capturing. You can use, um, Bellus 3d pro or 3d capture. So Bellus 3D Pro, uh, I think in from March onwards, March 2022 onwards, uh, they're uh, shutting down the app services. Uh, but uh, I mean, I still use uh, 3D Bellus Pro. And as I showed, uh, whatever uh, you have seen in my presentation, all those like uh, 3D scans uh, are done from uh, Bellus 3D. Uh, are these apps are free or paid? Well, definitely uh, those are not free and uh, they're paid. Uh, they have their different different uh, like services. You can say some apps, they charges case by case. So some apps, they have like uh, annual subscription, uh, like $1,000 or maybe $800 uh, for a year. Uh, some, some apps have like monthly subscriptions uh, around $250 per month. Uh, so yeah. Any more questions yet? Can somebody here in India use these apps? Is it open for, or, or, or is it only people from the US who can use this? Uh, no, I don't think, uh, because in India as well, there are like, let me, uh, I think in India as well, there are apps, uh, these apps are available. So, uh, and I mean, the main concept behind this, once you do this small designing, you should have our own uh, lab either in-house or maybe in India somewhere. If you have a lab, for example, in Mumbai, who does digital workflow and uh, who accept digital cases. So with these apps, you can do 2D smile design to show the patient. And with these apps, you can uh, go for 3D smile designing for your backups, mockups, and then send it to the lab. So instead of sending to Spain or Brazil or United States, your cases, you can send it you can send it to Mumbai and uh, in some like lab uh, which does have like digital workflow and they uh, they know what to do when you send all these STL and DICOM files. So you can work, you can collaborate with these labs and once you collaborate with the lab, lab will give you 3D models. So, uh, and all this like it's virtual, it's, it's like completely you're sending that, sending to the lab. So different, different apps, you're paying uh, what you're paying, but then all these apps, they have like, as I said, open architecture uh, in the previous, le uh, previous lecture. So open architecture means you can send that to any labs in the world. It's just like that particular lab supposed to have digital workflow and that lab should uh, connect with these particular apps on the same platform. So your workflow, what you are doing uh, in, in your clinic, you can send it directly to the lab if you have like same connection. So for example, in uh, here we have perfect finish lab or we have SML lab, the two different different labs. There are many other labs as well. Uh, for in like New York, New Jersey, we have uh, like you can say another, uh, 20 to 30 labs, which are digital. So uh, going forward, I think if, if those labs are accepting 
your digital workflow, what you are doing, and they can produce, they can produce those 3D models for you. Now, um, many labs, they have like, I don't think that is a question in India because, but in many labs here in the United States, um, they like to use third-party software. It depends on what scanner you are using. Um, because if you are using three ship scanner, for example, and we have a perfect finish lab and we have SML lab. So SML lab and three perfect finish lab, these two labs are integrated already in our software. And the, with the three ship, what three ship gives us our software, we have already integrated uh, those two labs. We have other labs as well, in, which are integrated. So while using three ship scanner, you have to select the lab first. So you know already, you know beforehand where your all this workflow is going. Once you select the lab, then select the patient, do your scanning, do your 2D small design, 3D small design, and send it to the lab. So you have better connection with the lab and you virtually. Now, lab people will directly, they know you can comment what exactly you want and lab people will give you uh, the, what you need. Now, if you go for plan maker, plan maker Emerald S, now they have different flow, workflow, digital workflow. The plan maker Emerald S is another scanner company and their workflow is, we cannot select the lab initially. And this is like whatever the, their latest version right now, uh, what we are using. And that's the workflow. Maybe they could change in future, but the current workflow is uh, we have to select the patient. We have to scan the patient. You can design it. You can mill it in-house if you have milling machine. You can do everything in-house if you have, or else you can uh, send it to the lab, that particular lab which has integration with the digital workflow. So how to send that from the plan maker Emerald is software, they use Romexis software. So how to send that information, what you are doing with the help of plan maker in Romexis, you cannot send directly through Romexis software. You have to save it to the computer. You have to save all those files, STL files, GitHub files on that particular patient's thing, uh, patients, all those photos and uh, JPEG, PNG, other uh, files. You have to save it on the computer or cloud, which is HIPAA protected. And then all this information you are sending via something, some other third party platform. Like, for example, we have EasyRx Ortho. So, EasyRx, you can Google it, like Easy, E A S Y r x like a prescription r x so easy r x ortho they have like this is another platform so we signed up for that platform for sending our plan maker for sending the cases which we are scanning from plan maker emerald scanners so this easy r x ortho is like a third party we need to log in on their like easy r x ortho once we logged in we can send our cases for the patient's cases from plan maker, what we scanned, we have it stored in the cloud or computer. We can select all those files and send it to EasyRx Ortho. In EasyRx Ortho workflow, we have to select particular lab. So now all these labs, like just like EasyRx Ortho, this is like third party. I don't think we have in India. I'm not sure about that, but um, maybe that's the opportunity, like you can go for it, you know, you can make it something like this. Uh, and uh, we can have our own, like which is uh, collaborating other uh, dental labs. Uh, or, or we can have our own like MGV uh, dental school, uh, their own uh, in-house uh, dental lab. So if you have in-house milling machine, if you have in-house 3D printing machine, uh, then just like, you know, uh, and we can like, we can do everything in-house and that's the beauty of digital dentistry. Yes, sir. Great. So uh, I, I had one doubt. Mm -hmm. uh, 
regarding the incisal uh, designs of uh, laminates we, we had uh, four different designs like window and uh, palatal wrap etc so uh -huh. what are your opinions uh, regarding all the designs like which one is more preferable i like it depends on the case but i like uh, incisal butt joint i like uh, that a lot incisal butt joint is more predictable and uh, you know it's good but certain cases uh, when you need to go uh, to the lingual side as well. Like, you know, you need to uh, extend it a little bit on the lingual side. So uh, those are, uh, those designs, uh, you can use like 379 burr and just uh, go on the lingual side um, and then extend it a little bit. Or if your incisal mandibular incisal edge is coming there and you need uh, that coverage as well. Uh, in that cases, I would go for that. But Maximum cases is incisal butt joint. Incisal butt, yes, yes. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much, sir. Welcome. And then for incisal butt joint, like there are like uh, various verbs, uh, LVS2, uh, 14, 16, uh, 21, or um, LVS4 is for like your incisal reduction. Um, then 934 is the disc, which I said uh, that you can use as well, or sometimes like interproximal strips. Uh, diamond discs you can use um, so that even you know for when you are sending to the lab that impression that lab people they know where to cut where to uh, uh, ditch it ditch the dies so that's uh, very useful and uh, more or like you can use for the preparation like label surface uh, 8850 or 8500 uh, and I, I mean, all these numbers and everything, which number, which bar, which you have to use if you are doing another session on, uh, you know, operative dentistry, restorative dentistry. In that case, like I will explain it more uh, in detail. Uh, okay. Thank uh, you so much, sir. Thank you. There's one question from Dr. S I mean, um, Dr. Akshay, there's a question from Saurabh. I think that was the first question. Just a second. I cannot see it, ma'am. Uh, uh, when my, you uh, decide to go for, I don't know how it's pronounced, chiloplasty, is that so? Yeah. Uh, in smile designing. Yeah, so chiloplasty in smile designing is basically um, like surgery of the lip, basically. And uh, we usually perform like, you know, plastic surgeon or oral surgeons. Uh, they do this. Uh, but uh, it, it depends on the patients, what exactly patient wants. It depends on what exactly, what type of patient, uh, you know, uh, what exactly his outcome he wants from this smile designing. Some patients, they want completely changing the facial appearance. Then in that case, we work with uh, plastic surgeons and oral surgeons and then do a com combination of like, okay, you do this part, I will do this part. Or many times patient is okay. Um, chiloplast uh, like uh, chiloplasty for what? Uh, what exactly was the reason behind it? If do you have a um, gummy smile and that's why you want to like, you know, uh, do uh, completely like lip surgery, you want to lower the lips uh, or uh, many, many in combination with your nose surgeries and your uh, uh, chiloplasties. So uh, in combination with that, both of them, and then you have to do this. Or sometimes some patients, they have, um, Many oral surgeons, they do buccal fat removal from inside. And then you can do a smile design. Or um, many times um, they do uh, Botox injections and do smile designing. So Botox is uh, pretty common. Uh, very few patients, they go for chiloplasty, like surgical procedures. Uh, they want like smile designing, which is non-surgical and you know everybody go everybody try to opt for that unless and until there is like some real need that i have to do this and uh, in certain cases then only we should go we should think about that thank you so much sir mm -hmm. a new question that's come up uh, dr akshay yes uh, in case of bruxers uh, how the incisal guidance is maintained while fabricating veneers uh, in case of Bruxers, how the incisal guidance is maintained while fabricating. Good, good question. 
So, uh, and that's why, like, when you have, you have to assess the patient. You have to assess the patient. It's not like veneers for everybody. If patient is a bruxer, in that case, you have to take care of the bruxism first. Otherwise, if you are giving that patient all these veneers, beautiful smile designing, like one veneer, $2,500, $2,000, and uh, later on, patient will come back, doc, what you did. Because you, as a doctor, you didn't recognize that patient is the bruxer. And you didn't recognize, okay, you have this bruxism. Now, whether you have bruxism, you have nocturnal bruxism. That's another lecture. That's uh, for like, that comes into orofacial pain and TMJ disorders. Uh, and that's why like when uh, I learned about this orofacial pain and TMJ disorders, uh, that there is a connection because before that, it's all about smile designing, cosmetic dentistry um, and laminates and veneers. But when you know if a patient is a bruxer, you need to give that patient orthotic appliance. You have to take care of his bruxism. You have to make sure uh, how uh, this bruxism is going to cause or make another failure for your all entire veneer case. So in case of bruxers, the incisal guidance, I would go with, again, incisal butt joint. Depends how much you see of the patient's bruxism is there. If that is severe in that case, I would go with uh, lingo version. It's very severe. Many times you don't have to go with the veneer. You can go with the crowns. So you have to assess the case. It's, it's like case by case. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, there is one more question. Uh, are there any disadvantages of uh, cosmetic uh, prosthesis or cosmetic dentistry? Like Disadvantages as if for... For which procedures in cosmetic dentistry? Uh, that has not been specified, but then uh, I think you have already covered that in your uh, lecture. Yeah, like for laminates, veneers, composite veneers, we have and covered the uh, disadvantages. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. Uh, but any particular specific procedure they want to know? An anonymous person. In fact, somebody had uh, said right at the beginning, um, Dr. Amay. That uh, mm -hmm. can you please repeat the difference between veneers and laminates? I think that was right at the beginning of the lecture. So, but I couldn't stop you at that point of time. Uh, I see. I think what we can do is one is that either, I mean, if you don't have the time, we can, we are going to be anyway putting up the recording of this. I think we can go through the recording once again. Okay. So that's one, or you just want to quickly um, brush that up once again. Yeah, sure. I Whatever don't mind. Like, your choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, all the way, like if you go, can you? Hold on, let me share this. Can you see the screen now? Yeah, no? yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Can you see it now? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, as you can see here, the uh, it depends on the restoration for like laminates for misshaped teeth and veneers for discolored teeth. So, laminates, it's like, for example, uh, I mentioned like if you have certificate, you are not changing the color of the certificate, right? You are like, you're, you can laminate the certificate. So, Laminates, basically, you're in that certificate, you can make, make the laminate and then you are changing the shape, not the color. So by when you laminate the certificate, the color of the certificate is not going to ch change, but shape, yes. And when you veneer the wood, that like you can change the color of the wood. So that's the main like basic difference of the veneers and it has been mentioned in uh, contemporary of cosmetic dentistry as uh, if you want to read more on this you can uh, use that book contemporary of cosmetic dentistry but uh, i hope that is clear i mean for the laminate and veneer so laminates for misshaped teeth for example if you have a central incisor and your uh, incisal edge is chipped 
or, uh, or maybe lateral incisor and lateral incisor is little um, uh, crooked and you want to change, you want to just, you want to, your color is supposed to be the same. Like you have very nice bright smile. You're not changing the color. In that case, that's called a laminate. But for many dentists, many technicians, they think, oh, laminate and veneer is the same. Of course, it's the same. The only difference is the shape and the color. But only cosmetic dentist knows, okay, what is laminate and what is veneer? Very Thank nicely you, explained, Amir. Welcome. Thank you, Gurgaon. Yeah. I just, just before you end, you know, just one uh, personal question. Like, see, do you ever have patients coming with their own preconceived notions of how they want their smile to look? And then you yes. actually do your, you use your app or you do your digital dentistry. And depending upon, you know, whatever that, you know, parameters that you're looking at, uh, they might end up, I mean, maybe your um, idea of what the smile will finally look like, it doesn't match with the person's own perceptions before they come to you. Right. Right. So, so the thing, think this way, Doctor uh, uh, I am that like previously patient used to come the same way like patients are coming right now. The change is in what we are delivering to the patient. That's the change that has been completely changed now, because initially what we used to explain to the patient, like okay, we have to take your picture, and then on the picture we have to draw the certain lines. This is this is what your midline. This is what your this. Your, your dental midline, and that's how your teeth. And we have to draw all this like shape, a nice shape of the teeth. I have a couple of drawings. I can share it maybe next time. So uh, 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 you know how I used to love drawing and stuff. So you have, we have to draw those like teeth and we have to tell the patient, okay, this is how you are going to, you know, your teeth supposed to be. And this is what we are changing. That's how we are doing. Us many times, that's one method. Like that, this is like completely changed into a 2D smile design with the app. Now, another method is we will take the impression of that patient. You know, dental anatomy and occlusion class, guys. So, how you carve your tooth, uh, waxing, basically, right? Then, digital uh, dental waxing, wax ups. So, all those dental wax ups are completely now digital wax ups. So either you can go for digital wax ups or the traditional way was um, put the wax on those, on the, whatever the model, patient's model you have taken and then put that particular uh, either gray wax or white wax and then do a nice complete, like you are sculpting those teeth. Now you sculpted those teeth and you are showing to the patient, this is what it's gonna look like. So that another method. Then third method was, uh, which we still use like direct mock-up on the patient's teeth. We are not bonding, etching or bonding. We are just putting the composite and then showing the patient, this is what you're gonna change. This is what you're gonna look like. This is what you are, we are, you know, that's how we are changing the tooth. And that part, your dentist or cosmetic dentist, your skills are very important. So the whole scenario, how we explain to the patient those, the, this is what like, you can say those three different types what we were using before. Now we are using 2D small design, 3D small design and the direct one. So it's completely changed now. And with the help of like digital dentistry and artificial intelligence, we can do that within we, two years back, we used to do it in four minutes, four minutes the entire digital wax up, uh, uh, 2D small design, four minutes. Uh, digital wax up as well, like max, max was like, I guess, eight minutes. So the 3D wax up, and that's how like your, your uh, the way you are doing dentistry, the routine dentistry uh, is completely changed. And you are giving more time to the patient, like not explaining everything because now patient also understand, you're educating the patient, patient also understand what exactly he's gonna get and what, how that patient is going to look like because we took the pictures, patient's pictures and with the help of camera and everything. Now that's the entire change that patient gets like a, it's like a 
what you get like a perceived value and uh, changing uh, the whole perception towards the dentistry. And that's what as a dentist, that's what we need to change because this is what more important. Dentist is not scary. In movies, it shows like dentist, oh, you are a dentist? Oh, okay, fine. I have to stay away because you are a dentist. So we, we have to change that whole perception. And uh, we are here to help people. <laughs> we, we have learned so much and we are, we are doing dentistry. We are like contributing our uh, daily life. Yes, uh, yeah. uh, many dentists, they have stress. Uh, their stress level is high as well. So we have to cope up with that. And at the same time, we are providing dental treatment. But patient, they don't know. They don't understand this. All right. So I'm talking on towards you know, the, uh, for the dentist. Now, dentist needs to understand what we can deliver to the patient as a human being. So that in return, like if you are doing some kind of like digital dentistry and you are gaining that patient's acceptance level to the treatment immediately, because patient knows now what exactly he is getting. That, that's the complete like change. Yes, sir, thank you. Yeah. Uh, sir, there has been one more question. Like uh, what all book or we should refer for uh, cosmetic dentistry? Oh, there are many uh, books. There are many books. <laughs> like the basic, if someone needs to read like uh, for, with respect to digital dentistry or a cosmetic dentistry, a basic book. Our you can practice. start from the contemporary. Uh, there are porcelain vineyard, Dr. Galeb Gurel's book. Uh, we can start from um, uh, minimally invasive preps. We can start from um, facial driven smile. So there are many uh, books which are like many. If you want, I can send it to you the list. But there's like that would be great. Just like, yes, yeah. yes. That yes. Would be great. Next there question. is one more question, I think, ma'am. Two more questions, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is smile line important and how much difference you can see after correcting it? And what is the ideal method to correct it? Yes, smile line is very important because uh, oh. smile line is... Yes? No, no. Carry on. Yeah. yeah, smile line is very important because uh, smile line uh, is exactly like how your lower lip line is going to... Uh, when you smile at that time, how your lower lip line moves, that is more, and that and whether your teeth are following your smile line or not. And that's where smile line is important because there is a research there is in the literature, it has mentioned that if you are following the smile line, you're, the way you are doing the smile line with the help of all this, like whether you can do uh, golden proportion, one is to uh, one, one is to 1.618, uh, or you can use red proportion, recurrent aesthetic dentition proportion. That's another proportion. So you, you can use any proportion for your teeth, your mesial, uh, use a mesial distal width versus and your uh, incisor gingival height. So width versus height ratio, can you can, you can use any proportion for that, either red or golden proportion. But if you have a nice smile line, which is following your lower lip line, your smile will look good. And that's why it's more important. Uh, and how to correct it, as a, I guess that's the question. Yes, sir. yes. Yeah, so you can correct it. So if you just want to correct the smile line, in that case, you know you have to change it with the, just the shape of the tooth, right? So you have to go for laminates if you're not changing the color of the tooth. Yes. Uh, one last question, sir. Mm -hmm. What are the post uh, post insertion instructions for the patients after delivering veneers? Right. So, if uh, post instructions, uh, post op instructions, I will send it to you like the entire what we use usually. Uh, I have the sheet. Uh, I, I will send it to you guys. But the post mainly what you need to tell the patient that okay, so these are like this is not your natural tooth. 
if the patient is a drug sir, you have to mention that. Like you have to, you are giving your patient night guard, uh, orthotic appliance, not a night guard, a stent uh, to co like cover up your bruxism part. But uh, for the veneers, um, you are not like eating something like real hard from your front tooth. Otherwise it may chip off. So uh, that's one, that's the main thing. And patient knows before accepting the treatment in your informed consent, all these things supposed to be there. So patient already know what he's going through. And then again, you can give you a post of instructions according to the case by case, uh, what exactly uh, that particular patient needs. Thank you, sir. Um, some, there's just some one more question, yeah. Um, the golden proportion it says is only significant in canine or it applies for premolars and molars also. Golden proportion is uh, significant in canines. Uh, not in the molars. Um, usually they go with like uh, till premolars, yes. Uh, not, for the, not for the molars because uh, usually very few people, they have like molar to molar smile and that part is covering into the buccal corridor. Mm -hmm. So uh, we don't need to go uh, for golden proportion. The main uh, we need to consider is your centrals, laterals, and canines. Okay. So is that all, I think? Yeah. I think that's all, Dr. Ameh. Uh, good Thank day, you. Yeah, would you like yes, to yes, say yes. something? Yes, ma'am. Yes, I'm waiting. I said, I today a lot of questions for Ameh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> See, but I like the way you explain the difference between veneer and uh, laminate uh, because <laughs> usually here everybody, even practitioners, they use it alternately. Um, and many times postgraduate students, even they, when we give a seminar, like uh, if we give it, what is the difference between laminates and veneers? Right. If What's you Google it, it's, it's going to be the same. It's, it's like everybody is like, oh, laminates and veneers are the same. <laughs> the exactly. Are the same. But the basic difference, like you said, laminating a certificate. Engineering wood is really very good. I think that that is so self-explanatory. I think I'll also go back and tell this to my postgraduate students. Uh, I think that's an analogy that uh, people are going to remember always. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Very nicely explained, Ame. And I think this uh, recorded lecture we will be. I think Madam will be go. Uh, yeah, I, I'm again. going to be uploading the lecture tomorrow itself. Sunday, yes, so on yes. Monday. Monday the lecture will be up. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think the recorded lecture, when all of them will listen, it will be a real great help. Thank you, Ame. You're welcome. You're welcome. Dr. Akshay, I think... Yes, uh, yes ma'am. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir, for such an enlightening session. Uh, thank you. Like, thank you, Dr. Really great. And question and answer and say session... say hi to the baby, I guess, who were attending. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. So yes, ma'am. Yeah, and I, it's been a great session, Dr. Rame. And I think, you know, that was really very, very nice of you to have accepted that uh, invitation immediately. And uh, we had requested for only one lecture. And it was uh, your nicety that, you know, you volunteered for not just one on uh, two lectures in spite of uh, all the busy schedule that you've been having. And it's been, I think, an extremely enlightening My session. Uh, I said last time also. I know nothing of dentistry, but I've sat through the lecture. I think that speaks volumes. Uh, you know, so like a lot of new things that have come my way. It's been a pleasure listening to you. And more so, as I say, I think Guru Ma'am will agree with me. You know, when you have a student of yours sitting at the other end and you are the listener, it makes you all the more proud. So it's been <laughs> great. Madam, yes, yes. You, I totally agree with this. Yeah. Uh, it really makes us proud to listen to yes. our own students. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for all those Thank listeners you. who have hung out till the end, uh, as I said at the beginning also, so Amay has been somebody who's decided to take charge of his life earlier on. And, uh, you know, whatever talents that he had, as he said, you know, his talent in drawing, I think that aesthetic part was ingrained and he just discovered what he had and then put it to good use. It's been an amazing journey, Amay. Wishing you all the very best for all Thank your you. uh, future endeavors. Wishing you your uh, green card the process also getting over soon. And uh, wish you have many more lectures with us in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
thank you thank you so much thank you so much for all your efforts and if your father is still at the end you know proud father who must be you know he was there he was one of the first <laughs> i don't know whether he is attending or not yeah, yeah. but I, i saw his name right at the beginning he was one of the first persons who have talked him so thank you once again yeah thank you see you thank soon you so i think one thank day you, we have your lecture here in the college whenever you come yeah out. definitely yeah Yeah. Yes, that offline visit. lecture, offline lecture will be great. I mean, when when whenever you come down to India. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and uh, I I told Doctor uh, IMM as well, like about uh, or facial pain and TMJ disorders and other lectures. Uh, maybe in a couple of months we can we can schedule that as well. Absolutely. Okay, so much schedule, but then. Absolutely. And the preclinical lectures that you were speaking about. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. Shaka, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, yeah. It's going to thank be good so night much. for us, but have a great yeah. day. Have a wonderful day. Yeah, thank you. Have a good night. Uh, thank yeah. you so much. Thank you, Doctor Akshay, for all the efforts in spite of thank having you, baby. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Ah, Pustake sir. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Yeah, Pustake sir. Thanks for all the uh, the initiatives that you've taken and uh, which has given us the benefit of Doctor Ramesh's lecture. Thank you, Gurve, ma'am, uh, for being the Support behind I mean, the behind the scenes yes. person. He's the one who's <laughs> always you know, giving us the permissions. You know, always being enthusiastic and supporting any new initiative that we uh, start to plan. So without her support and without uh, the support of uh, Dr. Pradeep, I think all these initiatives wouldn't have been possible. So thank you yeah. all once again. Great session. Thank you. Shall thank see you. you soon. Bye. Yeah. Bye bye. So I'll just stop the recording first.